And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I was thinking about a television commercial not too long ago, one that we haven't seen for a while. They change so often. They're in style one moment and then sent to the trash bin the next moment. But you probably saw it, I'm guessing, and may remember it. It was done by the Geico Insurance Company, which now features the gecko as its mascot. But before that, Geico used a caveman, interestingly enough, as part of its advertising strategy. And the tagline was that Geico insurance is so easy, even a caveman could do it. The point being Geico has made insurance so simple, so easy, that someone of limited intelligence, like a caveman, could be able to use it and figure it out. Of course, the commercials went on to look at the point of view of the caveman who was offended at this, but the point being that Geico was going to make your insurance experience simple and easy. And that's a very powerful uh, selling point because we all yearn for simplicity in our lives. We live in an increasingly complex and complicated world. And we all yearn for the days when things were simple. All of us, all of us have very powerful and nostalgic memories about our childhood or back in the olden days when things were supposedly simpler than they are now. And we kind of yearn for that experience of simplicity, of easiness, of sitting on the front porch and enjoying the cool of the evening without having to worry about cell phones or emails or what have you. This idea of simplicity is a very, very powerful attraction in our lives. And you know what? I think the same thing goes for our faith. We want and desire our faith to be simple. Not simplistic. Not ABC rudimentary, but simple and easy and understandable. Because for many of us, our faith can be difficult. It can be mysterious. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to believe? How many times am I supposed to do it? And it's a very sad fact of life that the church and organized religion can overcomplicate faith. So much so that some people get so discouraged and so overwhelmed and so confused that sadly many of them simply drop out and say, you know what, it's not worth it. It's too hard. It's too complicated. But what we're reminded of this morning is that God never, ever meant it to be complicated. As a matter of fact, he designed it to be simple for us. That we would know everything we need to know. It is not God who has overcomplicated our faith or made it confusing. It is us. And our readings this morning reveal God's desire to give us a faith and a belief that is simple and easy to understand and 
Therefore, we are capable of living it out. Look at our Old Testament reading this morning from Deuteronomy chapter 30. And I draw your attention to verse 11, where it says, It is not too hard for you. It is not too far away. What we believe, what we have faith in, what we hold on to is not and should not be hard for us. And then go down to verse 14, which says the same thing in a different way, that the word, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouths and in your heart. In other words, God has made it simple and easy for us to understand. He has not overcomplicated it. And we also see that restated by Jesus in our gospel reading, where a man comes up to him and basically asks him that question, what is the meaning of it all? What am I supposed to be believing? As we paraphrase here a bit. What is my faith all about? And Jesus cuts right to the heart of it. Now, even though this was designed as a test for Jesus, this was a very legitimate question, especially at this time. Because the Pharisees, the Jewish religious leaders, had grossly overcomplicated faith. They had taken the Word of God, they had taken God's law and expanded it to include their ideas of tradition and custom. So at the time that this scene is taking place, there were 613 laws that Jews had to be aware of and had to be obeying. Like I said, most of them were not from God, but from the religious leaders, piling law upon law upon law and doing nothing more than confusing people and making faith more complicated. And they had laws about all kinds of things, washing hands before you eat and that kind of thing. That's not a a religious rule. It was simply, simply something that they developed that they thought was a good idea. So Jesus cuts right through all of this confusion. And basically, in answering the question, says, you want to know what it's all about? You want to cut to the heart of the matter? You want to know what God wants from you in your faith? It's pretty simple. Love God and love your neighbor. Love God and love your neighbor. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And that's it. Jesus took what was complicated and difficult and confusing and burdensome and put it in a way that everybody could understand. You want to have a vibrant and growing faith? Love God more than anything. Love God with all of your being. And love your neighbor. Love others as yourself. And Jesus was constantly making that point in the Gospels as were the gospel writers, that God wants us to love him and he wants us to love others in his name. So as we think about that this morning, what can we say, what can we say that will help us understand that a little bit better? For one thing, God is reminding us this morning that there is nothing secret or nothing hidden about him. Now, that doesn't mean we know everything about God that there is to know. 
Far from it. God is infinite and unknowable and unfathomable to us. But God has revealed everything about himself to us that we need to know. Whether that's through his word or through the Holy Spirit or what have you. Everything we need to know about God, he has revealed to us. There is nothing secret or hidden that we should know that we don't. Now, there was a heresy in the early church that said the exact opposite. It was called Gnosticism. It starts with a G, silent G, Gnostics or Gnosticism. And the Gnostics believed that there was some kind of secret or hidden knowledge that you had to access in order to understand God and to please God. And I suppose there are elements of that today in certain religious groups and circles. But don't believe any of it. That is a heresy, that is a fallacy invented by men only seeking to corrupt the gospel and make themselves more powerful. There is nothing God hasn't revealed to us that we need to know. Everything we need to know about God, everything we need to know about faith, everything we need to know about Jesus and the Holy Spirit, He has revealed to us through His Word, through Jesus, and through the Holy Spirit. And that's why, for example, we read in Luke 8, 17, Luke writes, For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed. Nothing concealed that is not out in the open. Do not worry. Do not worry about possessing some kind of secret knowledge or inside information. There is none. God has made himself plainly known to us in his word and in his will. The second point, as we think about this, is we have to remind ourselves that to live a vibrant faith and a growing faith, we don't need to be an expert. We don't need to have a lot of degrees in biblical theology. We don't need to spend our entire lives poring over the minutia of the Bible or biblical texts or commentaries on the Bible. There's nothing wrong with that. We are encouraged to read the Word. We should read the Word. But do not feel that because you're not a so-called expert that somehow you're missing out on something because you're not. As a matter of fact... Being an expert may actually be a hindrance because when you're an expert or think you're an expert, you think you know everything, like the Pharisees. And when you think you know everything, you're not willing to listen to what God is saying. Remember Paul's words from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 where he talks about the difference between the foolish and the wise. And that God chose the foolish to shame the wise, and he chose the weak to shame the strong. We don't need to know everything. We don't need to be an expert. God is not calling the experts. Jesus didn't call the Pharisees to be his disciples. He called the fishermen and the laborers and the so-called uneducated. Don't worry that you don't know everything. In many ways, in many ways, all we need to know is summarized in that wonderful children's hymn. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. What more do we need to know than that? 
And then I would say the third thing we would want to take away from this is that yes, God has not complicated our faith. He has made it simple and easy. That is, the solution is simple and easy. The answer is simple and easy. Getting there, however, can be more difficult. It's like working out a math problem. You remember in the math textbooks, I don't know if they still do this, they had the answer in the back in a lot of them. So you could go and get the answer and check your work. Well, we've been given the answer. It's the work and how we get to it that's the problem, that's oftentimes difficult. To use another analogy, put it in a sports term. You know, a golfer wants to know how to get better at his game. So he goes to the pro and the pro tells him, well, just hit the ball down the center of the fairway every time and make all those putts. Well, that's great advice. And that's pretty simple. But doing it is a lot harder. And there's the trick. So it reminds us this morning that it's the doing it part that's the hard part. And a reminder that we can't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. We cannot do it in our own strength. We can accomplish this. We can live out a life of simple faith only by the power of the Holy Spirit. God has told us what he expects of us. Love me, love God, and love your neighbor. That's pretty simple. Doing it is hard. Loving someone the same as yourself is hard. And it can only be accomplished, not in our strength, but only through the power of the Holy Spirit, only when we come to God and surrender to Him and say, God, I want to live the way you want me to live. I want to live out my faith. I pray through the power of the Holy Spirit that you will help me accomplish that. And that's the only way that it works. That's why Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 12.9, that in speaking to Paul, God said, my power is made perfect in your weakness. Because only when you admit you're weak, only when you admit you can't do it yourself, only when you come to God in total and complete surrender, can God then fill you with his Holy Spirit and do what he wants to do in your life. That's what God is yearning to do. To have a relationship with you where he fills you up with himself. But we are so filled with ourselves that we keep pushing God away. We know the answer. We have the answer. We've gone to the back of the book. We've seen it. We know what it is. But we can only get there, not on our own power, but only in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only thing that allows us to love God and to love others in His name. Many years ago, there was a cartoonist who became quite famous named Rube Goldberg. You may have heard of that name. And Goldberg became somewhat famous for taking simple things and complicating them. That is, design a mousetrap in 20 steps, not one. As a matter of fact, every year they have a Rube Goldberg competition where people gather and they will be given a problem and they're told, design a solution to this problem and make it as complicated as possible. Do it in as many steps, up to 75 steps as possible. Now, we all laugh at something like that, but we must admit that our lives can become overcomplicated. The world can become overcomplicated. We sometimes feel overwhelmed with what's going on. 
Every day there's new technologies we got to keep up with, new problems, new issues, new pressures. Life gets more complex. And we yearn not for the Rube Goldberg solution, but for the simple solution. Thanks be to God that He has given us the simple solution, which can be summarized in one word, or rather one person, Jesus. That is the answer to a complex world. That is the answer to our faith. Not putting rule upon rule and show up here and do this and give this and serve this, but put all your faith and hope and trust in Jesus Christ. That is it. Because when you do that, that will allow you to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. Put your faith in Jesus in a complicated and complex and difficult world. What could be easier or simpler than that? Amen.